Dubois, we're gonna do a five minute video and this one dovetails with a lot of different uh, aspects of the law. This is why a business that has employees would be uh, well served to maybe have a consultation with an employment lawyer to at the very least pay the 300 bucks and get a, a primer on what you need to know from a high level. And so this story uh, is actually a business had a person working for them, and I'm not being cagey, I'll, I'll tell you why. And the person working for them was misclassified both ways. So this person was supposed to be a, an employee and they were paying this person as a 1099 independent contractor. And the person was supposed to be uh, hourly and instead they paid them salary, okay? Then that's the first part. Second part is there's nothing in writing, there's no contract. And so that means when there's nothing in writing, that means we're actually very limited because we aren't able to make clear expectations, to set forth the way that we're gonna handle termination, to discuss whether or not this person's entitled to a severance. And so what happened is this person was let go. Um, actually, I'll dig a little bit deeper. The company, the old company merged with a new company and one of the new bosses was like, hey, this, this is not working out with this person. We need to move on. And then that person started making threats and her husband got involved, which by the way, I, I don't understand why anyone's like, if, if one of my employees' husbands called me, I just, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you. I don't have a relationship with you. I don't know who you are. And, and quite frankly, I, I'll speak to my employee. I don't need to talk to their husband. I think it's just weird anyways. So the husband gets involved and he starts making threats um, and they're veiled threats, but he's saying that she deserves a severance. And he's tying it to some sort of math formula where it's like for every year that was there, you owe her a month. So it's like theoretically, if someone works for me for 10 years and I have to fire them because they're not doing their job correctly, that I owe them 10 months of severance so that they can go sit around and do nothing for 10 months. So here's, here's the deal. Let's just boil it down, guys. In Florida, you are not entitled to anything unless, ready for it, out of the goodness of their heart, they decide to give you something or they decide to buy your silence, usually through a separation and settlement and severance agreement where maybe I don't have to owe you a severance, but maybe I'll offer you some severance because I wanna buy your, your silence and buy you signing a waiver that you'll never sue me. Um, or, and this is the best way, you negotiate it in the contract in the beginning. And I'm gonna tell you, almost no one ever does that. Um, because first of all, you gotta be pretty sophisticated to think that far ahead and to think, hey, when this job comes to an end, I want a severance. And then you're gonna have to like, you know, let's say one of my legal assistants was like, hey, Eric, I'd like to negotiate a severance. I'd be like, well, I'm really sorry, but EPGD doesn't do that. We're not offering you a severance. And if the person wants to turn down my job offer and go work somewhere else that will offer a severance, more power to them. That's called the free market. And so, uh, and, and, and normally you would negotiate it. It would be a contractual term. Now it's in your agreement. This is why you should consider if you're the employee insisting on a written agreement and insisting on the right to go meet with a lawyer to negotiate it and make sure that it protects you and to think of these types of things. Um, not every job will allow that, but then again, you have to decide the type of place that you wanna work. And more to the point, five years from now, when you're being let go, uh, maybe through no fault of your own, and you ask them, well, what about my severance? And they say, you're not entitled to one. You've got no leg to stand on. There's just nothing. There's no leg to stand on. This isn't France. Um, you're not going to be able to sit around and get paid to do nothing. Um, you know, this is America. And so to the point, guys, um, I really think it's important to have written agreements. I think it's very important to be advised on, uh, and oh, I mentioned this earlier, to be advised on employment law. So this person, I said they were misclassified twice. So first of all, it was a Monday through Friday, nine to five office job. That is not an independent contractor. I don't care what you tell me next. That is an employee under the laws of the United States of America, first of all. Second of all, it was the type of job where it was administrative assistant, they were answering phones and getting cups of coffee for guests. That is not a salary position. That is an hourly position. In fact, the only people allowed to be paid salaries are the people that meet an exception to the rule, which is professionals, executives, people who have authority over making decisions for the company, including hiring and firing, and they manage other people. If your receptionist is managing a whole bunch of other people, then okay, great, maybe we can pay her a salary. Um, if, if she's just doing basic 
administrative assistant job duties, that is an hourly person entitled to being paid hourly with uh, minimum wage and overtime. So guys, um, obviously there's a lot to unpack there. If you have any questions on any of these topics, leave a comment below.